Yo, what's going on guys, Sekapoko here, bringing you another Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross video. For this, we're going over team building and all the basics you need to know about team building, putting characters in your team, what characters work well together, what other ones don't work well together, and how you should build your teams for certain things. I'll also be going over my Reddit guide, so you guys can have a link to that in the description below. So if you wanna talk about that, they will be all there in a written format, so you guys will have to see something on the screen as well. So guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, guys, so um, if you're going through story mode, you're gonna have to have a very good team that's gonna do very, very well against content. So let's talk about a team build that really synergizes well together and talk about that for story mode. I'm gonna go over that first so you guys can understand what a good team build would be. So first off, we have Green Meliodas. Now, Green Meliodas is gonna be a character that relies heavily on low HP for his counters, and he's gonna do lots of damage otherwise in his main skill, so he's not gonna need too much help there. And his Passive ability is going to be increases the critical chance ratio of this character um, there's diminished HP when using a skill. So basically what that means in layman's terms, uh, because that's horrible wording, Gyps, you need to fix that. Oh my God. Um, essentially, the lower HP you have, the higher critical percent chance you have. So if you have 50% HP, you have way more critical chance. Hey, Seca, do you know the exact multiplier? No, no one does. No one in the entire world does. It's really unfortunate. I wish we did but we don't. So Meliodas is going to be my big damage carry on this specific team. And I'm going to be using other characters that really exacerbate his damage and give him the most amount of survivability and damage overall. So because of all that, Meliodas' ultimate ability does damage, it cancels buffs and stuns and all that stuff. That's not really important. That doesn't help you with team building too much because you don't need to use that. What really matters is his core abilities and how you get the damage on him. Okay, next up on this team build, we have Alioni. Now, Alioni um, is really here for two reasons. His first ability has Shatter, which is uh, crushing on a lot of other websites, and it originally was crushing. But essentially what it is, is it ignores patience rate. This is the same ability uh, that King, Blue King has as his ultimate ability, if you're wondering. Um, it is a very strong damage attack and does large amounts of damage to a single target because crushing is huge um, on characters. Uh, th his other ability has Taunt Stance, so if you needed to uh, taunt and reduce damage on your team, he's a very good character to do that. And um, his passive ability is the main reason he's here. He increases... I don't know... Okay, so the, he increases green characters. I don't know why he says HP attribute. Anyway, I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to talk about him, these passive wordings. HP rated attributes attack by 10%. So all green characters... This is supposed to be Vitality, by the way. Because uh, green is Vitality. Uh, green, he boot boosts all green characters' attack-related stats by 10%. Now, what are attack-related stats? So if we go to a character, all attack-related stats are going to be your attack, your, pe your penetration, which is your fixed damage that it goes on top of your normal damage, your critical chance, and your critical damage. So all four of those are going to be boosted by Alioni in giving you an extra 10% to all of these and 10% attack. That's why green Alioni is a very good character because every character on this team is green and allows you to get lots of damage. Up we have SR Lizhawk. And SR Lizhawk is an amazing story mode character. Definitely do not forget to use her because she's the best. Don't forget it. And there's a lot of reasons why. First off, uh, Green Lizhawk is going to have two abilities, both of which are going to be very, very valuable for characters. The first one is going to decrease defense-related stats on enemies, which is defense, uh, uh, resistance, endurance, slash, uh, I don't remember what we're calling it, Redu resistance, endurance, and patience. There's a lot of different names for it. Uh, crit critical resistance and critical defense. Critical defense basically lowers is the amount of uh, critical damage resistance that you have, and critical resistance is the resisting the chance of criticals. So, really, really good for Meliodas because he's going to do lots of critical damage, lots of free, uh, hits, and do lots of fixed damage to characters because she will boost that damage. She also has a um, an air air effect attack that does pierce, which it will increase the amount of damage. Uh, triple the amount of penetration on this character and do area effective damage that will do more fixed damage to all characters. But the major reason to bring her, and this is also mistranslated, I believe, uh, this is 15%. Damn, Gypsy, you'd be fucking up like crazy. I got to, I'm gonna have to talk to you about these, these stats. No, it is 8%, you're right. <laughs> I was incorrect. Okay, so this is gonna be increasing the all allies HP related stats by 10% in all battles except PvP and deathmatch. So deathmatch is, um, I think Extinction Battle, which is raids. 
So uh, he just he oh my god he's he's retranslating everything. I don't understand why. Um, PvP not useful here, but for story mode this is an amazing passive ability for story mode. This is 10% HP skills. HP skills, if you are not aware, are all a character's um, HP recovery per turn, uh, healing skills. I don't know, this is recovery per turn, healing skills, and finally, lifesteal. This is the big one. So basically, you're getting an extra 10% lifesteal on top of that, plus another 10% HP on all your characters. Now, lifesteal in this game actually scales very rapidly because of how much damage you're gonna be doing. So lifesteal is a huge, huge thing here, and because you're getting 10% HP on all your characters and getting 10% healing on all your characters, very nice to have. Now, I'm not sure if this is gonna be true on start, but the next character we're gonna be talking about is Jillian. And Jillian here is going to be a very, very nice character. This might vary from the start of launch because I think on launch is increase the HP of all characters. Um, this is HP of all green characters by 30%, but after launch, when there was a rework on Jillian, she gets HP skills increase, which basically gives you 30% lifesteal. Now this can be very valuable for you later on. This is gonna be valuable now and later on. And you'll understand why this is valuable later very, very quickly and be like, oh, thank you, Seka, for telling me to build this character out. <laughs> So I don't know if they're going to do HP skills on launch for this character, but if they do, awesome, because this character will give 30% HP skills to all characters, which gives you 30% uh, HP, 30% lifestyle, 30% regeneration, and 30% recovery skills increase for all characters. So if you had these two characters linked up together, essentially Meliodas will be at 40% lifesteal. Liz will be at 40% lifesteal. Alioni will be at 40% lifesteal. Every single character on the team is going to have 40% increased HP and 10% increased attack skills. This is what a good team build looks like. You're using passive skills to boost the overall team in order to give yourself a huge bump. If HP skills is not on launch and we're gonna just have HP on launch, it's still good. You get 40, you have 30% HP, so it's still good. And Liz, of course, is gonna give you 10% life steal, which will help you with survivability. Now, another thing that people would say is, well, second, why don't you just take out Jillian and then put an Alioni in the back for his passive and then use Blue King? Now, you could do that. That's also another valid form. If Jillian does not do HP skills on launch and only does H, uh, HP, you could take out Jillian, put Alioni in the back for his passive ability, and put King in this spot here in order to give yourself another character, which is a healer on your team. Now, in order, the reason King is a good character is because King has the ability to petrify an enemy and make them not able to use any skills for one turn, and he will also increase fairy stats by 8%. Now, he's not gonna get boosted by any other character on the team, but he does have, um, a heal on your team, which is gonna be useful. I mean, overall, King is an amazing character. He's one of the best characters in the game, and he's definitely a good character to put on your team for this. So if you are looking for another character, that's a, that's a good way to go. Next on the team building thing, now we've gone over story mode. There's gonna be a lot of content in the game that you're gonna to have to repeatedly farm. That's gonna have a lot of characters on the field. And on these sets of contents, for when you're grinding gear, or you're farming uh, for food, or whatever, you're gonna to wanna to have an area effect damage team. Now, the best units on global launch to use are on, on your kit are gonna be Red Hauser. Uh, Excuse me, Green, Liz Hawk, Coin, uh, Coin Shop Gother, and Coin Shop Bond. All four of those are probably the best units to use in the game. Coin Shop Bond is probably the best farming unit on launch. Um, and he looks really cool with his outfit, actually. <laughs> Which doesn't come till later. Feels bad. <laughs> Um, so Coinshot Bond has two abilities that makes him really valuable. First off, he's able to snatch and take enemies' uh, stats, 20% attack and defense, uh, up to, I think, 50% attack and defense, and then he'll apply it to his own stats. And he'll do an air effect attack that starts at 150%, which is very, very strong, um, to all enemies. Then we go into Hauser. Hauser actually is one of the best characters for farming in the entire game for auto farming because Hauser has two area of effect attacks. Hauser is one of the few characters in the game that has two area of effect attacks. Most characters, when they have an area of effect attack, they have one single target attack and one area of effect attack. But Hauser is one of the few that actually has two. And he's actually a better farming unit for auto farming than Green Lizhawk. But what's really sad is that Hauser has a base penetration rate of 20%, and I actually have to put penetration gear onto Hauser in order for him to be more viable in content so that I'll get more damage. 
Uh, to be honest, penetration is probably the best thing you can do for auto AOE farming. It provides the most amount of damage. And as we found out over time, penetration is the way. Uh, Green Lizhawk is probably the one of the better farming units to do for damage overall. But for auto farming, she's a little bit lackluster because she has a single target attack and she has an air effect attack, so it's just a little bit harder to use for auto farming. And that's why people don't usually opt for her. But overall, uh, her damage is very similar to Hauser's, but her substats are not as high as Hauser's, um, are, are, are higher than Hauser's, but are less high than Hauser's. Um, no, sorry, not her subsets. Her main stats are lower than Hauser's for attack, but her subsets are higher than Hauser's, so she could potentially have more damage than Hauser, but she only has one air effect attack. The last one that you can use for air effect farming uh, that comes later after like the third week in global is Coin Shop Gother. And Coin Shop Gother um, is kind of like an asterisk character. You kind of want to use him for farming, you kind of don't. It's really just up to you. He's there for two reasons. The first is his passive. Every turn he doesn't get hit, he gives 10% attack to all your characters so that your characters do more damage over time. So it is kind of good. Uh, he has an attack seal and it does decent damage at the start. And then he can also rank up the characters on your team. What's really nice about this character is that you can actually play with the rank ups if you want to play who gets the rank up. He will actually only rank up the character specifically that has the highest amount of combat power. And there is a rework with auto later on that doesn't happen on launch that will uh, make it so Gother will only rank up when he gets a level two rank up. And that's actually super, super valuable because on launch he's always one, he's using uh, level one rank ups on characters first and he'll use it on whatever character has the highest combat power. Now combat power is the summation of all your attack, defense, HP and substats put together. And there's a multiplier for it that um, this, this set was good, but HP is by the way, the highest amount of combat power. All right, guys, so let's go into raid bosses and demons and talk about them a little bit. So the first raid that is available on the launch of the game is the Red Demon. Now, this is going to be the major part of the end game as you start the game. Um, this is going to be the first, like, thing that you're going to do to increase your level cap. Um, if you're wondering how to level up your characters and get to the 65 and all that stuff, uh, the way that you get the materials to do that is by doing demon raids. And then of course, to get to 70, 75 and 88 later on, you're going to have to do more and more demon raids as time goes on. So demon raids are the way to increase the level cap to character, which basically goes from 60 to 65. And that's how you do that. Um, so a team build for a demon raid is very, very simple. You're going to be focused on three parts. For the red demon, you're going to be focused on crowd control, damage, and rank ups. Uh, this allows you to do the max amount of damage while also receiving no damage at all, which is super good. So the first character you're going to bring to your team is going to be Slater. Slater is actually the best DPS unit in the entire game on red demon on launch of the game. The recommended DPS unit is going to be Blue Bond. And he is actually here because he does damage. Uh, Blue Bond is actually an insanely strong unit with Rush. But Blue Slater is actually the best unit at the start of the game to invest in for Red Demon. Unfortunately, though, Blue Slater is not who I would recommend for Red Demon. I would actually recommend somebody else different. But I'm just going to give you guys a, a, a snapshot. So Blue Slater is the... DPS unit that you're going to be using at the start and then you're going to be using uh, Gother for rank ups as far as making sure that you can do all that stuff and then you need to do um, King here for uh, petrifying units. So this is the team build that a lot of people use for um, the red demon raid and you're going to be using Kane here to boost the attack skills of all characters in demon raids. Now this is the original meta however However, this is not the team build that I would use going forward, and it does not have a ton of longevity at all. Blue King and Red Gother are solid investments as units go. They are some of the top units in the game to date. Um, they're still good to date, but Blue Slater is doo-doo. Now, the number one unit to build out in the game for Demon Raids that is the best unit for DPS for both Crimson Demon and Red Demon until Hell Raids come out is Red Liz Hawk. Now, why is Red Liz Hawk the best unit in the game for Demon Raids? 
So Red Lizhawk is the best unit in the entire game for Demon Raids for both Red Demon and Crimson Demon when it comes out until Hell Raids come out. She has the longest longevity for a DPS unit that is in the game for a very long time and can still complete Hell Red on Crimson, but is not a recommended unit. Uh, this unit is the priority unit to build out for both Red and Crimson because she is so, so strong. First off, her first ability has Charge or Rush, which ignores defense. Crimson Demon, if you did not know, has a very large amount of defense and defense skills, which makes it so that Red Lizhawk is a very valuable unit. She's also very valuable for Red Demon, who has that same kind of thing. Second ability here is going to do 220% attack but does something very, very valuable here on her second skill. And she will actually uh, make it so that enemies cannot use buff or debuff skills. And I believe uh, they can use stances, I believe. I don't know. I think they can still use stances. But essentially, um, she makes it so that enemies cannot use buff or debuff skills on her second skill. This is actually a very valuable skill to use on the red demon because on the first turn, um, if you debuff a red demon, it will actually make it so that it doesn't attack at all with the Red Lizhawk. So if you use a level two Red Lizhawk, the, the Red Demon doesn't attack at all. First turn. <laughs> all right, so the main reason that she is so good for raids is because every turn that you do not receive an attack, every single turn, you will increase your base stats, that's your attack, defense, and HP by 10%. That's right. You have infinitely scaling attack on Red Lizhawk. Uh, okay, so the other thing that Red Lizhawk is go good for besides the two demon raids is uh, there's actually an event raid boss called a world event boss that she's also good for, and she's good for that crab boss too. She's actually the best DPS in the game for that boss because it just has very, very high defense and gets patient stacks. Uh, she's better than Demon Meliodas, everybody. She's so strong. Uh, Red Lizhawk is probably one of the most solid investments in the game and makes it so that you actually save your SSR medals, which is super valuable. Uh, there are tons of reasons to build out Red Lizhawk versus uh, another character. Um, SSR medals to level up characters are very hard to come by, whereas SR medals might be a little easier to come by at the start of the game. So I would recommend building out the Lizhawks uh, because they are very, very strong. They're both insanely strong units and it allows you to build out other units in the game later on and you don't have to worry about um, being max bin for SSR medals. So uh, definitely, definitely uh, build out Red Lizhawk, best best P uh, PVE unit in the game for a while. Um, there were a few videos early on where people were doing millions upon millions of damage with Lizhawk just for memeing it up. So definitely uh, try her out at some point. Uh, super, super strong unit. Now, as far as like Grey Demon, Crimson Demon, uh, the the final bosses and all that stuff for all those things, I have lots of other guides for those that I'll be probably making individual videos on as time goes on. So you guys know exactly what to expect in these raids and uh, final bosses and all that stuff. This is way too complicated to go into all of that. This is just a beginner thing, so it'll help people out there. But having said that, guys, my name is Psychopoco. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, I have a link to the main guide in the description below as well as all the reddit guides that i've created for this uh, as well as a lot of things for the new players in the channel so guys thank you so much for watching have a great rest of your day peace